Hello, hello, this is Diamond Justin. I'm here making a devlog for Hopping Scotch. I've already made significant progress when it came to the development of this game. So this is more of a catch-up situation. I'm going to be showing what I've already accomplished and what I'm planning on doing in the future. Now, this isn't the first time I've created a video game, or at least tried to create a video game. There were many times where I'd start creating a video game and I would make significant progress too, but I would lose passion in making it because of, well, impatience. One of the hardest things I've struggled with as a game designer is controlling the scope of my games and how much time I should put into them. Keeping a game small and focused will increase the chances of that game being realized. So every time I create a new game, I aim for it to be simpler and simpler. This time I was inspired by the game of Hopscotch, where players would hop on a path of squares in order to get to the end. I was also inspired by the minigame in the Naruto Ultimate Ninja series, where players would input a series of buttons in order to land or evade an ultimate attack. From these two concepts, I devised a premise. A video game where players press a sequence of buttons quick enough to reach the goal. The first step was creating the course, or rather, an array of inputs that the player needs to press to move forward. I set the path to be represented as a string of integers, that way I can easily come up with courses through numbers. Then the next step is to show what these inputs are to the player. I elect to have the buttons the player presses appear on the ground. Next I create a bounce pointer representing what number in the list of inputs the player is at. Then the tricky part, programming the character the player controls. I want the character to bounce from one spot to the next, up to where the pointer is. But I also want the character to bounce to where the pointer was before starting a bounce, instead of where the pointer currently is. This is because the bounce pointer is being incremented every time the player presses the correct input. However, I do not want the character's leap flight to be readjusted mid-jump. Otherwise, there could be some walking movement. Doing the movement this way gives the impression that the player is storing correct inputs for a satisfying big leap when the character lands, since the character will keep hopping until it reaches the pointer. I also implemented tripping, which is a period where the player cannot input anything, so that players are punished for inputting the incorrect buttons. I don't want players to just match buttons to advance. This also brings back the bounce pointer to the position the player was going to land, if the player was mid-leap. Next, I create a scene for multiplayer where I can have two players navigating the same path at the same time. Now for the UI stuff. I put in a timer to track how much time has passed. I put in a fade effect so that the transitions aren't as jarring. I put a delay at the beginning of the round where no players can press buttons so I can later put in a countdown. The game can recognize who touches the finish line first. I put in a pause screen that can lead players back into or out of the game to other scenes. I also put in a win menu that appears when a winner is decided. That's all the progress in Hop and Scotch that I've made so far. It took around three or four days of coding itself to get to this point, and the rest has been video editing. Subscribe to keep up to date, like if you want to spread this with others, and have a good day.